A federal investigation is underway after a deadly medical helicopter crash. And we will take a look at how the federal government's hurricane response becomes a topic of debate between the presidential candidates. And we're seeing temperatures right now in the upper 60s and low 70s, but there's a cool down coming up somewhere. Details in a few minutes. Mountain News First at Four continues. The investigation into an air medical helicopter crash continues in northern Kentucky. We are learning more about what happened and the people who died. WYMP's Phil Pendleton tells us what investigators are doing at the scene as people remember the lives lost. The area behind several schools, a park, a restaurant, and multiple homes is where this tragedy unfolded just after 5.30 on Monday afternoon. And it's where the investigation is continuing to try to find out exactly how and why all of this happened. Our hearts definitely go out to the community, the family, and the friends. Uh, this is an impact that we felt throughout the entire community. Kentucky State Police say they are handling the death investigation and are working directly with the Owen County Coroner. Three people, Gail Alleman, Bethany Aikman, and James Welsh, died after the FAA said the air evac helicopter en route to pick up a patient clipped a guy wire and crashed. There is a large television tower with multiple guy wires protruding down near the crash scene. Paramedic James Welsh had previously worked in Lincoln County. The EMS director there says he was an exceptional paramedic, employee and friend who in 2018 won the Above and Beyond and Paramedic of the Year awards. All three are being recognized for their work in working to save lives. And it's tragic knowing that they paid the ultimate sacrifice. Absolutely. So we're talking about uh, people that every day went out to help other people and were on their way to help other people to try to assist when this tragedy occurred. All three worked out of the Grant County area called Life Team 133. Kentucky Emergency Management is stating that they are sending out heartfelt condolences to the family of these three people, also thanking them for their dedicated service. In Owen County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. We will update this story on WIMT.com when we get more information about the funeral plans and memorial services for the three victims. Governor Andy Bashir issued a statement today regarding the crash. It reads in part, quote, heartbreaking news last night out of Owen County. Please join Brittany and me in praying for the families, loved ones, and colleagues of those lost in this tragedy, end quote. Vice President Kamala Harris is continuing her media blitz in New York today, following her 60 Minutes interview that aired last night on CBS. With Election Day less than one month away, she and her opponent, former President Donald Trump, are sparring over the federal government's hurricane response. Michael George reports from New York. Vice President Kamala Harris sat down with the ladies of The View Tuesday. One of the, the issues that I'm very focused on is what we do around home health care. The appearance comes as a recent poll shows a quarter of registered voters say they still feel like they need to learn more about her. Last night, 60 Minutes pressed Harris on top campaign issues, including immigration. It's a long-standing problem, and solutions are at hand, and from day one, literally, we have been offering solutions. But, but the, the numbers did quadruple. And under the numbers your, under today, because of what we have done, we have cut the flow of illegal immigration by half. With less than a month to election day, 25 states have already started early voting, with nearly 2 million ballots cast so far. We have to win this election. If we don't win this election, there's tremendous consequence for everything. Former President Donald Trump once again criticized the Biden administration's response to Hurricane Helene. The response has been very weak, unbelievably weak. Trump has falsely claimed at least 15 times that FEMA is diverting funds or only helping Democrats recover. Vice President Harris called out the misinformation Monday. It's extraordinarily irresponsible. More than a million registered voters in North Carolina, a key battleground state, live in disaster areas as a result of Helene. Michael George, CBS News, New York. The North Carolina State Board of Elections approved a series of emergency measures to ensure victims of Hurricane Aline can vote in the 2024 election.
The provisions allow 13 counties to modify early voting and election day voting sites to accommodate local conditions. State Elections Director Karen Brinson Bell says every county will have at least one early voting site, but that road damage may make it hard to get there. We may need to take voting to the people uh, because they may not be able to access um, their voting sites easily. The Bipartisan County Elections Board can choose to make voting laws more flexible to respond to the disaster in affected counties, like making it easier to vote by mail or sending voter assistance teams to relief center shelters. Under the new measures, voters can request and receive an absentee ballot in person until November 4th. The 2024 election is forecasted to be the nation's most expensive federal election. A new analysis from nonpartisan organization Open Secrets says spending to elect a president and member of Congress will hit at least $15.9 billion. Outside spending is helping drive up the price tag. It's already reached about $2.6 billion. Open Secrets expects outside spending to top $5 billion before Election Day. Mail-in and absentee voting reached new levels in 2020 during the pandemic. Some swing states are still seeing a high volume of mail-in and absentee voting in battleground states. That has prompted multiple lawsuits from Republicans. They're challenging everything from whether mail-in ballot envelopes are properly sealed to whether they are postmarked correctly. Democrats have also been waging legal fights to ensure these votes are counted. Beginning January 1st of 2025, medical cannabis will be legal in the Commonwealth. Business owners who were interested in a cannabis business license were given the opportunity to enter a lottery. While the state law has been passed, many cities and counties in Kentucky are giving voters the option. In Clay County, medical cannabis is on the ballot and County Clerk Beverly Kraft says it will be up to the voters to decide. Everybody knows somebody, you know, that could benefit from it medically, you know, cancer patients and whatnot, Parkinson's, whatnot, if, you know, the, they've heard success stories, but on the other hand, they have a fear of, you know, abuse of the system. Applications for the Cannabis Business License Lottery closed on August 31st. Business owners who submitted an application before that deadline can check their account to know the status of that application. Had another picture perfect fall day across eastern Kentucky. Take a look here at the latest. With live pinpoint Doppler radar, we are seeing clear skies across all of eastern Kentucky, and this will get a nice break. As we go throughout the next seven days, you can see right there on the Kentucky Mesonet site in Knott County, we're seeing plenty of sunshine. You can see if you look very close in the background, the leaves starting to change colors. And we're seeing temperatures in the 60s and low 70s. We're at 70 in Prestonsburg, 74 in Manchester, 71 in Monticello, 60s from Logan down to Wise. If you have plans to grill out tonight, there's the grill cast. Go to 73 by the 6 o'clock hour, 74 by the 7 o'clock hour, then upper 60s, low 70s by the 8 o'clock time frame with clear skies. All is quiet on future view over the next 24 hours. You can see temperatures as we go throughout the uh, midnight time frame in the 40s and 50s. As we go throughout the start of your Wednesday, we'll see temperatures in the low to mid 40s. And then as we go throughout the 12, 1 o'clock hour, we'll see temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s. Now, the question is, how long is this nice weather going to last? 72 is where we should be for this time of year. We're talking below normal temperatures on the high end. Find out how low we'll go in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Amelia. Eric, thank you. Two of the five former Memphis police officers convicted in the deadly beating of Tyree Nichols are being released from jail. Tadarius Bean and Justin Smith were granted release during a bond hearing, but must remain on house arrest. They were found guilty of obstruction of justice and witness tampering. Demetrius Haley was found guilty on several charges, and his excessive force conviction presented more concerns for the court. He was denied bond. 
The Biden administration is trying to ensure that nearly all lead pipes are replaced within the next decade. President Biden announced a landmark rule by the Environmental Protection Agency that requires utilities to replace lead service lines, a major source of exposure, along with lead paint. The EPA is investing $2.6 billion for drinking water upgrades and lead pipe replacements. The money coming from the 2021 bipartisan infrastructure law. And over the years, we've only chipped away at the problem. But chipping at a problem hasn't fully solved it. It's taken too long. It hasn't been given a high enough priority until now. <laughs> Folks. The president held the event in Milwaukee, a city already replacing its lead pipes, with federal funding cutting the 60-year timeline down to 10. The EPA estimates the rule will prevent up to 900,000 infants from being born with low birth weight and reduce up to 1,500 cases of premature death from heart disease. Coming up as First at Four continues, the chance to hit it big will soon cost you more as the price of a popular lottery game is set to more than double their price per ticket. Weather headlines for tonight, abundant sunshine is in the forecast. The temperatures are gonna hover near normal for now. Details on the first forecast in a few minutes. Stay with us.